Chapter 2 Introduction to Financial Statement Analysis This chapter is a recap on accounting. So there is a whole course in accounting, but we're going to quickly recap how accounting uh, works and what are the key concepts. And why is it needed? It's needed because for any firm that you are a shareholder, you want to know how are they performing? Are they performing well? Uh, and you want to know it regularly. So on some periodic basis, you want to make an assessment that are you putting your money in the right places? So there are four statements that are required legally by publicly traded companies to share with the public. And these disclosures are the balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, and shareholders equity. So these four statements are available on SEC's website. Quarterly, the company is expected, public company is expected to disclose these performance uh, statements. And uh, yearly, there's an annual report as well. So let's get into each one of them very quickly. So the balance sheet. Balance sheet is basically the current position. It's the snapshot in time. What is the current company stock? Meaning, what are our, its assets? What are its liabilities? And what is the equity position? So there is this equation, assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. So these two sides must balance. So that is the balance sheet. That's why it's called the balance sheet. It says that the assets that the company owns are uh, either through the liabilities that the company took on or through the equity funding that the equity holder uh, invested their own money. So net working capital is, is something that you can find out um, from these statements. But basically, net working capital is the capital needed to run the business in the short run. Right? It has things like account receivable, accounts payable, inventory. In all of these things, your money is stuck. In accounts receivable, you're waiting on your money to come back. This is the money that you are keeping with you before you pay to your vendors. And this is the money that is stuck because your inventory is on the shelf. And you have some money lying not used in cash and you have some debt as well. So working capital is basically your current assets minus current liabilities. It's the amount of money that is used and needed to run the business. So a balance sheet has assets that are listed on historical valuation. So that's the key. Remember, it's the acquisition price that's used. And so the current valuation is not used. And so that's a big gap. If you have a property and plant and equipment that you bought as a company a long time ago, the valuation would have increased. But the the accounting standards don't capture this. Accounting also doesn't capture the value of the brand. It doesn't capture how much customer relationships you have. So a balance sheet, although it's a snapshot in time, it has many drawbacks. So that's the key learning, if you remember from our accounting classes. Enterprise value is basically, if you were to liquidate this company today, like in the market, what would be the net value you would get? And so what you need for that is the market value of equity plus debt minus cash, right? So it's basically saying the total value of the firm's underlying business operations, right? So this is what the market is willing to pay you. And then this is the debt you've taken on and this is the cash. So enterprise value is a total value. If you were to liquidate this company right now, what would, what would be people willing to pay you? It's an important concept. So that is balance sheet. It has some drawbacks. Uh, networking capital and enterprise value are the two key things to take away from here. The next one is income statement. Income statement is the bottom line. Like the balance sheet is the point in time. Income statement is the bottom line. This is a flow measure. The balance sheet is a stock measure, right? Whereas the income statement is a flow measure, which says, in a given certain period of time, what is the net income that was made? So if you do revenue minus expenses, you get income. Revenue is same as sales. You could also say sales minus expenses equals earnings. Earnings is same as income. So these are all terminologies that we've seen in our, our accounting classes, but this is a quick recap. So revenues equals sales, incomes equals earnings. 
So from income statement, you can capture the operating income. Operating income is basically revenue minus cost of goods sold minus operating expenses. So this is what is, how, how is your company doing just from like, is your product profitable? Meaning is it, does it take you less money to produce it and you can sell it at a higher, higher profit margin, right? So operating income is a good measure. EBIT is another good measure which says earnings before income, earnings before interest and taxes. So if you take the operating income and from that, if you remove operating expenses, you get EBIT. So earnings before income, before interest and taxes. Net income is EBIT minus interest and taxes, right? EPS is net income or shares outstanding. So that's basically saying for every share, what is the earning? So if you, let's say, put $200 in a share, and if you make $2 as net income, your EPS would be one, right? So one, um, so let's say you, I think I got that right. So n net income about uh, shares outstanding. So if EPS is $2, meaning for every share you get $2, that means if the share price is 200, and if EPS is two, that means your EPS is $2 per share. That means you're making like 1%, right? So that is what you can get out of income statement, right? You can get uh, operating income, net income, earnings per share. Now, cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is has three parts. Cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. Cash flow from operations, basically your day-to-day -day operations to run your business. Cash flow from investments is you buy new property, plant, and equipment. Cash flow from financing is basically are you raising money through debt or equity. So if you add all of this up, you get net cash. So cash flow statement is related to balance sheet and income statement, which we'll see later, right below. So that is cash flow statement. Like how is your company using the cash that it has uh, and what are the sources of that cash? Shareholder equity is the book value of the firm's equity. So it's not equal to the market value. So that's the key distinction. Basically, it's how much equity is the book value, how much equity has been raised, not the market value. Market value has the book value plus retained earnings. So typically market value upon book value is greater than one because we saw two big things, remember, from the balance sheet. It doesn't capture the asset's current valuation uh, and it doesn't capture multiple things like brand, customer relationships, and so on. Changes in shareholders' equity is basically through retained earnings. If you have retained earnings that uh, you did not either give out as dividends or you didn't buy back sh shares, then that goes, the change in shareholders' equity, uh, the retained earnings goes and uh, as part of the equity part of the holding. So that is the fourth and the final uh, major statement. There are, though, these two other parts, management, discussion, and analysis, it gives you really interesting risks that are not captured in the balance sheet so far. So though there's expectation to disclose some of these things uh, by the management as to how the management thinks of the forecast. So this is an important section. And notes specifically that are below every document, uh, it gives you the right context, a lot of important details as to how you should interpret this financial statement. So. Although we've seen some of this, remember, there is a whole class needed just to go over uh, these four different statements as to how to interpret it. And to quickly recap, the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, and shareholder equity are connected in the following way. So if you have revenue minus expenses, you get net income. Net income from the income statement goes over to the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement starts with the net income and then you add or subtract cash flow from operations, cash flow from investment, cash flow from finance, you get the net change in cash. This net change in cash actually flows through to the balance sheet here. So the balance sheet as part of its assets has cash. So the current year's cash is previous year's cash plus net change in cash. So the cash flow statement is related to the balance sheet, income statements related to cash flow, and we saw the major connection between these these uh, four statements. 
retained earnings that are not uh, given back as part of dividends or share buybacks uh, goes to the equity section of the balance sheet. So assets equals liability plus equity. So equity is connected to the shareholder's equity document. So this is how the four statements are connected. Again, a full class is needed just to really understand this well, but this is a quick recap. So now we're gonna look at financial statement analysis. Like, can we be the Sherlock Holmes and try to understand like, is, uh, is this company doing well? So there are 10 metrics that I'm picking from this book. This book has really good set of metrics. Just looking at 10 ratios. These ratios can be used to compare things over time and also helps us compare with other firms. Like, hey, if you are a shareholder of, let's say, Google, and you want to find out, is Google doing better or if Facebook's doing better? So you can use these ratios to find out how is this company doing. So there are four ratios in the first one for uh, that, that are very important for uh, operations. So EBITDA, net debt, and the DuPont identity. So let's look at that. EBITDA is like EBIT plus depreciation and amortization. So we saw what EBIT is, remember? Previously, earnings before income and taxes, interest and taxes. So this is operating income minus non-operating expenses, right? So that's from the income statement. So once you get the uh, EBIT, you can add depreciation and amortization because these are not real cash outflows, so you can add that back. So you can actually, with EBITDA, you get the cash flow, cash that the firm generates before any decision that it makes. Like it, it can make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to use this money. Um, and you can see that in the cash flow from operations, investments, and finance as to what it's doing. You can say, hey, how is this company doing standalone in terms of cash generation? So EBITDA is a EBITDA, E-B-I-T-D-A, earnings before interest and taxes, depreciation and amortization, that gives you the cash generating capability without taking into account the capital allocation efficiency. So now, once you know the firm is able to generate cash, now if you wanna find out um, what is a net debt, can the firm actually serve its debt, right? Is the is uh, is it in it has does it have a lot of money that it has to give back and it has uh then then it has from its cash reserves so you could say total debt minus cash minus short term investments so that gives you the total net debt that the company owes right um so if it can service to its debt holders that is this net debt and if it's positive um then, then that's the excess money that, uh, uh, that the company owes. Ideally, if it's negative, that's better. So dew point identity is a good one, which, which expresses return on equity in terms of profitability, asset efficiency, and leverage. So dew point identity, let's break it down. Profitability would be net income about uh, revenue or sales. So this gives you the net profit margin. Asset efficiency, like is, is, is this business uh, first profitability is like, is this business profitable? Then you find out like, hey, are they actually turning things around quickly? So then you find out what is their turnover? Are they, what is their sales about total assets? Are they actually selling things quickly? So that is your efficiency, asset efficiency. And third is leverage multiplier, which is like if their total assets, how much of it is, uh, is equity and how much of it is debt? So you can find out the equity multiplier like from like what is the leverage of this of this company. So total asset about book value of equity will give you the equity multiplier. So ROE return on equity is basically if you multiply these three profitability, asset efficiency and leverage, you get ROE as net income over book value of equity. So that's, this is a really good, important measure, return on equity, which basically says how much is the is this company making money? Is it profitable? And are they able to find uh, investment opportunities that are profitable? So that is good measure, return on equity, right? Once you have return on equity, there is some sensitivity here to leverage, as you can imagine. Um, so then you find out return on assets um, because net income, plus interest and expenses. Because here, if you see net income, there is interest and expenses are uh, something that the company has paid. So it has it was able to generate that. 
so if you add net income plus interest and expense plus interest expense the and if you divide by book value of the assets you get return on assets so this measure is a better measure than return on equity is less sensitive to leverage uh, but again if you want to look at leverage then you want to look at return on equity and so ROIC is the fifth measure which is less sensitive to leverage and less sensitive to also working capital. So if you are, if your uh, receivables and payables go up, then your total assets go up. So then ROA is a little bit more sensitive, but ROIC return on investment capital, invested capital is even less sensitive to working capital. So it has EBIT multiplied by one minus tax rate, which is basically saying, what is the after tax, after tax profit divided by book value of equity plus net debt. So this is a really good measure to find out after the tax profit generated by the business compared to the capital raised by the equity and debt. So whatever money the company has already invested, how is it doing in terms of return that it is generating? So ROIC is a good measure. So that's the five, the remaining five. So let's say PE, price to earnings, it's market capital, market capitalization or about net income or share price about earnings per share. Market cap is different than market uh, value is different than book value. Market value is it includes what the public thinks uh, the value of the company is, which includes the brand, includes intangibles. It includes like the current valuation of all the assets that the company owns. Enterprise value is market value of equity plus net debt. So think about this as uh, this is a good measure. Like what is the enterprise value? So net debt equals total debt minus cash minus short-term investments. Like what is the total debt that the company has to give? There are many forensics needed. Like if you see a constant set of negative cash flows, that could be a concern, but that's a separate chapter altogether. But uh, if you want to find out leverage, um, then you can look at uh, current assets about current liability. Quick ratio doesn't include inventory. Interest coverage, like can the company like uh, meet its, uh, its interest expenses, like the debt holders. So if it's greater than 5x, it's a really good borrower. Debt to enterprise, net debt upon enterprise value, right? It gives you the leverage. So it tells you like, what percentage of the business is financed by debt? So these are the 10 metrics, but these are not the only 10. There are many different metrics to, to do some investigation into the firm as to how is the firm doing. But hopefully this gives us a quick recap of the top 10 for operations, like is the firm operating well? Does it have a good return? And uh, what is its leverage? Is it, is it highly levered or is it less levered? And then we saw how all of these is related to the four accounting statements, income statement, cash flow statement, balance sheet, and the shareholders equity, right? So that was a quick recap on the four major statements that the companies are expected to share with all of the shareholders. And that is intro to financial statement analysis. Thanks.